Well, chapter 16 deals with aromatic compounds. So we're going to talk about benzene to start off and some molecular orbital stuff, and then we'll get into idea of aromaticity and larger structures that have properties similar to that of benzene. Well, benzene was discovered in 1825 by Michael Faraday. So there's a postage stamp here dedicated to him. And it said that he had a dream of a snake coming around and biting its tail for the structure of benzene, where we have alternating double bond, single bond, double single, double single as we go around the ring. Well, we know now that benzene has this resonance representation. So we can see here that we have this alternating single and double bonds, but remember that this is just one of the two resonance forms of benzene. It's where we often represent benzene with this circle in the middle. So rather than having a bond order of two here and one and two and one and two and one, it's really a overall bond order of one and a half. Right. So um, if we take benzene and kind of rotate it over on its side, Right, we end up seeing that we have um, these p orbitals that are all kind of standing up like dominoes, our soldiers, um, all standing up and contributing to this pi bond system. So that's going to be something that we're going to talk about on the, the next page in a little bit more detail. But remember that every one of these atoms is sp2 hybridized. Right, so they all have p orbitals, and they're all pointing up and down. So we have to have that sharing of p orbitals where they're in the same direction in order to have those pi bonds form. So what we are going to say in this chapter, and it's a term we're going to use over and over again, is we're going to say that it's a cyclic pi system. Cyclic is easy, it just means that it's a ring, right? And a pi system means that we just have these um, p orbitals available. All right, so it could be pi bonds or it could be p orbitals. Okay. So one of the things that we need to look at um, to understand some of the special properties of benzene is um, the reactions. So to look at the reactivity of benzene, um, we can look at all sorts of reactions, but let's look at cyclohexene and add bromine. So, this is a reaction from first semester, if you remember this. And the end result is that we get our bromo groups anti to each other. If you recall, we have that three-membered bromonium ion, and the ring opens up to give these dihalides um, in an anti-orientation. Now, if we take benzene here, and this is where it gets kind of interesting. If you take benzene and throw bromine in with it, and just let it sit, we actually find that there's no reaction. And this is a qualitative test that we do in lab sometimes. So bromine has an orange color to it. So when you add it to this alkene, the, the solution becomes essentially colorless. So in the second reaction, this case two, the end result is that we still have an orange color. Now we can force benzene to react, right? but the reaction that we see up above is an addition reaction because you, you added bromine across the double bonds. right? The H's that are here still stayed there. Now if we add FeBr3, we end up um, getting a substitution. So that H is replaced with a bromo group. And this is a reaction that we're going to cover in chapter 17. The whole chapter deals with reactions of benzene. So um, the other thing to point out is that all three double bonds are retained in the product. So it's, it, it's going to be rare that we eliminate that arrangement of double bonds. Now, it kind of makes sense if you think about it, right? Because bromine reacts with double bonds. But there's not really a double bond in benzene. It's a one and a half bond everywhere. So it's unable to really react because of that. Now, 
that arrangement of this alternating single and double bonds in benzene is very special. And it leads us into a discussion of why it's special and uh, this term aromatic. So I want to look at this little chart with you guys down below and walk you guys through um, how to interpret this. So as we look at this little chart here, we can see down here our energy down here at the bottom is basically cyclohexane. Right, so what we're going to be doing is taking all of these other um, alkenes essentially and hydrogenating them. So if you just take cyclohexane and you hydrogenate it, you get about 28.6 kcals. And these are all kcals per mole here. Now if we put a double bond on the other side here, Right, so that would be isolated double bonds because there is a sp3 carbon between the two of them. You get basically double. Right, so it's a little bit less than that, but 28.6 times 2 gives us 59.2, and the actual delta H is about negative 57.4. Well, if we put the double bonds next to each other, we would expect that the delta H would go down a little bit because they're now conjugated. So this is where we predict it to be, but it actually dropped down just a little bit because of, well, resonance and also here, conjugation. Well, if we add another double bond, so here's our last example. If we put one more double bond in here, just like this, then we're going to end up getting benzene. And we would predict that the overall energy, if we're not considering conjugation, would be negative 50, sorry, negative 85.8. Now, it's actually lower than that. In fact, it's lower than even um, the diene that we see over on this side, right? So we add one more double bond and the energy goes down even more. That's unexpected. So the question is, why is that happening? There's something physically happening in this molecule that makes it more stable than we would normally predict it to be. So to explain that, we have to look at molecular orbital diagrams. So the good news is that we're going to simplify it. So let's take a look here below at how resonance and um, molecular orbitals are going to affect uh, the energies. So uh, another name for these compounds where we have these cyclic structures and alternating single and double bonds are um, anulenes. So anulenes are simply cyclic hydrocarbons here with that alternating pi bonds, right, and single bonds. So the smallest structure that we can have that has alternating single and double bonds is the four anuline. So you notice here that that refers to the number of pi electrons that we have. Right? So there's two and two that gives us four. So six anuline is another name for benzene. So you'll see that used sometimes when you're looking at research papers and stuff like that. Right? Eight anuline has eight electrons, 10 anuline, right? And etc. So we can go on and on and on here. And we'll do that as we go through and look at some examples. So what I want to look at with you guys right now is the um, molecular orbital kind of picture of benzene. So one of the things we want to ask ourselves here, and let's just pose a question. So here's a question. The question is this, is are all of these annulenes aromatic, like benzene. So aromatic just means it has that special property of stability that we saw in that little diagram on the last page. The answer to this is uh, a little bit complicated, but it, the short answer is no. So I want to look at the MO picture of benzene with you guys here. So here's what you're going to do. I want you guys to imagine here that we have a table, okay, and on that table we've placed benzene. So we're going to put benzene here 
over on its side, just like this. All right. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take benzene and we're going to rotate it. So we're gonna kinda of turn it this direction and we're gonna rotate it so that it sits on one of its vertices here. So there's our table. And then at the end, what we're gonna get then is this. All right, so we rotated it up. We got our double bonds in position here. And there's your benzene. So it's kind of convenient, but the molecular orbital diagram for this, without getting into drawing all of the lobes in and all of that stuff, looks like this. So here's our energy. Down here. And at each one of these little spots where there's a vertices, there's gonna be a line. So there's a line here, a line there. These are parallel or even, right? And over here and over here and one up there. And it's convenient, but each of these lines represents one of the molecular orbitals. So then down below, we're gonna have a line here, right? One over here, those are the little shoulders. Right? One up top, and then one at the very top up here. And then right in the middle of this thing, so we kind of divide this thing symmetrically, but right in the middle right here, we have something that's called the non-bonding line. Okay. Now, let's start labeling this. So this is pi 1, and the, the two shoulders down here at the bottom are pi 2 and 3. doesn't matter which one is which there's pi two, pi three. Those are bonding MOs. And then up here we have pi three. And then up here we have pi four star pi five star, and then pi six star. And those fellows up here are gonna be your anti-bonding MOs. So then the question is, where do we put these electrons? Well, remember that benzene is six annually. So it has six electrons because this is an MO description of the pi bonds. So let's put them in. So one, two, right? You fill the bottom up first, and then we do this, right? And then we do that, so we don't, we don't fill them in until they're half full, and we're coming over, and we're gonna do that. So we can see that there's a, a net stabilization here of having our electrons in that lower pi three orbital. Right? Your isolated p orbitals would have a higher energy kind of like we saw for 1,3-butadiene. Now, um, this is referred to as a closed bonding shell. So a closed bonding shell is just another word for having no unpaired electrons. All right, now, let's take a look at another annulene. Let's go back and let's look at, um, so we did six, let's look at four. So down here below, let's take a look at four annulene. And, so again, what we're gonna do is, imagine you have your table here, right? And your table, you're gonna tilt that square over on a side so you get something that looks kinda of like that. And you know, this is something that we're gonna see in a second, it's called the polygon rule. So when we put these all together here, you're gonna have orbitals, MO orbitals at that relative position. Okay, so then we draw our little energy diagram here. And then we're gonna have a line down here 
and then these two shoulders and then a line up there. Now that non-bonding line kind of bisects this thing in a symmetrical fashion, kind of like what we did up above. So right here we have our non-bonding line, right? And then we can go through and we can label these things. So here's our pi one, here's your pi two, your pi, um, sorry, three, and lastly, pi four, and that's the anti-bonding that's up here. Now, how many electrons does cyclobutadiene have? Well, it has four, right? It's a four annuline. So we fill them up like this. We put two electrons down here. Now we have two left, but remember we don't pair these guys up until we have to. So we put one electron here and one electron over on this other side. Now these unpaired electrons represent a um, a situation where we don't have a closed bonding shell. And in fact, those single electrons kind of look like radicals. So it turns out that um, with two unpaired electrons here, we see a molecule that is very reactive. So it's not stable like benzene is because of these unpaired electrons. Right? So um, that leads us to some interesting observations. So let's come down here below and let's talk a little bit more about this polygon rule. So the nice thing about the polygon rule is that you know, it's pretty straightforward in, in the sense that you're just drawing these molecules kind of tilted on a vertices. So we see here benzene, we see a net stabilization. So there's something special about benzene. For cyclobutadiene, we have these unpaired electrons, not good. And for cyclooctatetraene, you have these unpaired electrons here. That's also a situation that leads to unstable molecule rather than a stable molecule. So all of these observations with molecular orbitals can be um, summarized and organized, I guess, into some rules. So there's observations that were made patterns recognized and some rules that came up to make predictions whether or not we expect a molecule to be stable like benzene or unstable like the um, cyclobutadiene.